Look at your neighbor to your left or to your right. Say, neighbor, God loves you. And so do I. God bless you. Be seated. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you are there for me, yes. I can say, never could have made it. What if I have a witness here? Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. Now I see how he was there for me. Yes, I can say I'm stronger, wiser. Now I'm leaving that alone. I'm better. I just had to get that out. God is awesome. Thank you, Lord, for this again privilege to stand before your people in this sacred place. We give you honor and we give you glory. We pause, God, with humble hearts and open minds. We ask you, God, to look into our hearts, to our mind. Feed us with your power. Feed us with your word. Feed us with your wisdom. Let it fall fresh upon us as we receive you, God. Thank you for this day, a day we never seen before, and oh God, a day that we will never see again. We thank you, God, for the angel of this house. We thank you for the family of this house. God, we thank you for these thy people who come this morning. Bless in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To our good friend and his absent, Pastor Collier and his family, and we are very grateful for them and for the Pleasant Green family. Amen. This is a reunion when I come home. It's like a reunion for me. Amen. I get to see some more family who I grew up with when I was a little boy. Some of y'all a little grayer hair than I am, but it's good to see you. <laughs> but it's good to be here again. Thank you, my brother, for playing the keyboard. I wish I could play and I wish I could sing, but I'm going to keep on trying to do the best that I can. I, I don't preach long, I don't preach long, I just talk long. And the quieter you get, the longer I talk. And so if you will help me this morning, pray for me and pray with me. Uh, your pastor called me and asked me would I come and share with you, and I did not hesitate. I shared with him, I'll be honored to come anytime Pleasant Green have a need. I will be there at the beck and call of the pastor and of the church. Amen. I want to revisit a text in the Bible, a very familiar text. I want to just recall it again. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, there is a story here that I want to revisit again. Is, is, is not strange to many of us, but it, it, it starts off in verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being in the ninth hour. I'm going to read that again. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called beautiful, the axe armed of them that enter into the temple. Verse 3. When seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked 
of arms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, saying, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give I thee that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. For a few moments, I want to talk about after the revival. The church say amen. Thank you. You may be seated after the revival. I like this text because it really emphasized and it really speaks of what was transpiring after they had just experienced a unusual revival. If you go back and read the text a few chapters, chapter back, you will discover that they had been in an unusual setting. The text says in chapter 2 that while they were at the place, they had experienced the first time the power of the Holy Spirit. They had been together in the room. They had been in the surroundings of place. People have came from the north, south, east, and west. And they was on one accord. And while they was on one accord, they had a, a different kind of experience. They were singing together. They were praying together. They was having church together. They were worshiping together. And while they were in worship, this is around the third hour of the day, the Bible said there became a sound of a mighty rushing wind feel, which is dedicated to the Holy Spirit. There's three hours in this text that I really want to try to bring out the third hour, the sixth hour, as well as the ninth hour. They had been in a revival. They had been in a spiritual revival. When I saw a man, our family singing up, on, on, up today, this morning, I thought about how wonderful that experience to hear them sing those Zion songs. It just took me back to the spiritual realms of God and be able to usher the Lord in and be able to invite God in. There's nothing like inviting God in your life. Listen, when you really close your eyes, sometimes you just got to close your eyes and shut out everything around you and just lift your hands to God and just invite God. God into your life. I tell you, if you just practice it, even if you don't know what it's all about, if you just practice and lifting your hands to God, a God who looks beyond our faults and supplies our need, a God who knows our ups and our downs, a God who feeds us when we're hungry, a God who sees us when we can't see ourselves, a God who hear our call when we don't know if anybody listening, if you just practice lifting your hands and then closing your eyes and say, God, I show sure enough need you in my life. Your life will never be the same. Listen, you don't have to know how to pray. You don't have to know how to read all the Bible. Even if you don't know how to find the books in the Bible, something about humbling yourself, something about putting yourself in position, amen, positioning yourself to receive that's what God has for you. And listen, God knows what you need. God knows when you're up. God knows when you're down. God knows your strength and God knows your weakness. They are now in the temple. They are now in a place of worship. This is the morning hour, the wee hours of the morning, and they are having church. Listen, ain't nothing like getting up in the morning, having church. When I woke up, let me tell you my personal experience. When I woke up this morning, I woke up with my mind stayed on the Lord. 
I don't ever try to leave home without talking to God. I don't try to leave my bedroom without talking to God. I don't try to do anything without telling God, thank you. Listen, God don't have to do anything for you. God don't have to do anything in your life. And every time God give you strength to get up, every time God give you wisdom to think, do you know God is still superior over your life? You ought to give God some praise. So when I heard them singing this morning, I saw I couldn't help my I had to stand on my own feet because I'm not on my own strength, but I'm on the wheels of God, and I had to lift my hand because I know I can't make it without God. I stopped by to tell you, you can't make it without God. Talk to me if you will. You can't make it without God. Tell your neighbor, you can't make it without God. Tell your neighbor, you can't make it without God. <sighs> they were, they were, they was in a revival. They were in a revival. Matter of fact, the revival was so unusual. They have never experienced the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you get a good dose, when you get one good, when you get one good dose of the Holy Spirit, your life won't be the same. I, 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 listen, it's a difference going to church and then being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, you can go to church. Yes, you can sit on the pew. Yes, you can clap your hand. But when you get a good dose of the Holy Spirit, listen, you can clap your hand when nobody else clapping their hand. You can give God some praise when nobody else is giving God some praise. You can give God some glory when nobody else has given God glory. They, 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 they just experienced the revival. Matter of fact, it was so awesome that the Bible records that when they came out of the revival, there were those examining their walk. You do know they're going to always have somebody examining your walk. I wish you'd come a little closer here. I'm going to say that again. Everywhere you go, you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you do because somebody is examining your walk. They came out of revival and they said they looked like they were drunk. That's in the text. They, they looked like they were drunk. They were looked like they was drunk. They were stumbling. They looked like they was drunk. They were stumbling. When you are in the power of the Holy Spirit, you start doing some strange stuff. You don't hear what I'm saying. When, you, when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, your legs start moving and, and nobody pushing on you. You start, your body starts shaking, shaking. And when, you, when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, your mind starts celebrating on the inside. And when you got the power of God moving from your toes to your knee bone, to your backbone, to your hand bone, to your neck bone, you can't sit still when the fire start burning on the inside. The Bible said, talk about Jesus. Jeremiah said, it felt like fire. Shut up in my bones. He's now, they leave the revival, the third hour. They leave the revival. The third hour is really nine o'clock in the morning. They celebrating the Lord in the wee hours of the morning. Now, the third hour is 9 o'clock, the sixth hour is noon, and the third hour is 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour, should I say. And so, here they are on their way from a revival. Now, if you look at the text, it just makes sense to leave the revival, to leave a tent revival on their way to the church. When you've been delivered, you will find yourself on your way to church. They, they wasn't going to see who was there. They wasn't going to wonder who was going to show up. They were on their way to prayer meeting. Listen, you don't know what God going to do in your life on your way to the prayer meeting. I, I, I put a pin here, put, put it here. Some, some blessings don't always occur in the church. It, it, it's in this text. Amen, amen, amen. There are recorded blessings that takes place in the house. But listen, some blessings takes place on the way to church. You don't hear what I'm saying. If you came looking for a blessing, you may have missed it. Because your blessing may have occurred in your car. On your way. 
to church. They, they, they are on their way. They, they are on their way to the temple. They are going to have prayer. It, it, it just makes sense when the Lord delivers you. It causes you to go in prayer. I said when the Lord delivers you, it causes one to go in prayer. When the Lord feel you, it automatically calls you to go in prayer. The Bible said Peter and John is now on their way to the temple. What they doing, they're celebrating. They mind is fixed on getting to the church. Why are they going? They just experience a Holy Ghost celebration. And when you experience that which belongs to God, you find yourself going to the temple. Yes, they were walking together up the temple going to the hour of prayer. Now, they already been filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, you, you don't, you don't want, you don't want to get filled and then go home and don't do nothing with what you got. Yeah, it, it, you don't want to get all that you can get uh, and then go home and don't do nothing to what God has given to you. Yes, if you don't have anything else, you ought to have at least a testimony how God had visited your house. Yeah, yeah, your home ought not be the same way when you get home, especially when you had a visitation of the Holy Spirit. No, you can't walk in your house acting the same way you left, especially when you had a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, you don't, yeah, you don't have to say nothing because people will see that there's something different about you. Yeah, you don't have to walk around carrying a big old cross on your shoulder and a big old Bible that you don't read in your hand. People will see that a change has come into your life. Yes, and when you own your way to the temple, you ought to draw some attention, yeah, to yourself. Now, let's hurry to the close in this text. Yeah, a man who's been crippled all his life has been laid at the temple gate. Now, I thought about somebody uh-huh, had enough sense to get him at least to the temple. Yeah, the man thought about if it's going to be any healing, it ought to happen somewhere close to the temple. Yeah, you got some family members who just way straight away from God. And if you're going to get them some help, you got to get them close to the temple. Yeah, you don't know who God is going to use to lay hands upon them at the gate of the temple. Yeah, the Bible said that while he was there, he took a job. Yeah, his job was begging for money. Yeah, now let me help you, Christian brothers and sisters. You got to be careful because people will use Christian and, yeah, use your wealth for their own good. 
Yeah, because you are a born again Christian, you got to be careful because they are beg everything that you have. Now, the text said that while he was on, they were on their way, they met a man who been lame at the gate called Beautiful. Yeah, the man said, I believe that when they come, I'm going going to beg them some arms. Yeah, I'm going to go in my begging mood and beg them to give me some helping hand. Yes, I'm going to beg them to give me some of their wealth. But you see, when you just came off of a Holy Ghost revival, you ain't thinking about money in your pocket. When you come off, yes, a celebration with the lawn, you ain't thinking about paying what bills you got to pay. All your mind is on is giving God some thanks for what God has already done. You see, sometimes we want God to do so much for us, but we don't take time to tell God, thank you for what you've already done. Do you hear what I'm saying? Instead of complaining about what you don't have, learn how to tell God, thank you for what you do have. Do you hear what I'm saying? I have. Grandma say he may not come when you want him, but he's always, I wish I had a witness in here. He is always right on time. Won't he show up and won't he show out? He'll walk with you through the valleys of the shadows of death. He'll hold you in the palm of his hand. That's the kind of God that you and I serve. But let me get back to the text. The man start begging, begging for some arms. And and Peter and John is on their way to the house of prayer. Now you got to remember they started the revival at the third hour of the morning. They passed through the sixth hour and now they're at the ninth hour. Six hours have now gone by. They meet the man at the temple called Beautiful. Do you hear what I'm saying? And while they there, the men start begging for some arms. And Peter and John said, Shiver and gold have I none, but such as I am, I give unto you. When you be in a revival with the Lord, you ought to have something to give somebody else. When you be in the presence of God you ought to have something to give somebody else I heard somebody say I came to Jesus just as I was weary room and say but I found in him a resting place and he had made had made me glad wait one minute he said silver and gold have I none but such as we have we give unto you the man start looking and they said look upon us if you want to see some joy we got some joy that came from God if you want to see some love we got some love that came from God somebody in here who have been walking with God or the have some love somebody in here who's been walking with God ought to have some joy I heard the songwriter say this joy that I have 
the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away do you hear what I'm saying I want to close now after revival was over they told the man Jesus Christ is the center of our life I come to give you not silver I come not to give you gold but I come to give you Jesus because what silver and gold cannot do for you Jesus can what silver and gold cannot open for you Jesus can what silver and gold cannot buy for you Jesus can what man cannot do Jesus can I came to stop by the day he'll make a way for you he'll open doors for you is there anybody in here no God will make a way say yeah say yeah say yeah He will wait one minute. Yeah, I gotta tell you when they told him. Yes, about sin, about receiving Jesus. They didn't leave him there. You got to, you got to get notice when you tell somebody about getting Jesus. You can't leave him there. You got to go beyond the extra mile of the way. The Bible said they reached down, picked him up. I want you to put a pin there when you see somebody going through their trouble. When you see somebody going through their pain. Don't look down on them, but reach down and pick them up. I stop by the day that we serve a God when we was down. He reached down and picked us up. What a need day. I'm going to go home and tell my story how I made it over. I came to the Lord. Anybody in here No God will make a way for you. He will take care of you. Yeah. I told you now about the third hour. I told you a little bit about the ninth hour. But one Friday, one Friday, one Friday, they took my Lord up the Calvary Hill. They stretched him wide at the third hour. He stayed on the grave stayed on the cross for the third hour. The Bible said at the third hour, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At the sixth hour, the Bible said, he died in the lock of his shoulder. The girth that are dead, the sun refused to sign. The darkness was over the earth for three hours, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour and I heard Jesus say father into thy hands I commend my spirit he died at the ninth hour he died at the ninth hour but I don't want to close leaving him on the cross no he died up on the cross they took him off the cross laid him in the tomb yes someone said conversation was going on between death and grave death called grave and said grave I got Jesus here and I want to bring him down he said bring him on I got Abraham I got Isaac and I got Jacob bring me Jesus they took Jesus off the cross laid him in the grave stayed there all night Friday night the word got out Death called grave and said, Grave, I want to know that you still got Jesus. He said, I had him all night Friday and I still got him in the grave. Saturday afternoon came, death called grave and said, Grave, I want to know that you still got Jesus. He said, I got Abraham, I got Isaac, and I got Jacob. 
and I got you. He said, Saturday night came. He said, I want to know, do you still got Jesus? He said, I can't talk right now. He said, why? Because somebody has called a meeting down here. Early Sunday morning, Jesus got out the grave, shook the grave and loser. The set of power is in his head. Oh, power! Oh, oh, power! Power! Can you say power? Power! Power! Ah, power! After the, the revival. Thank <laughs> you. 